Module 3, problem number 13. The data below represent the length in miles of a random sample of tornadoes in a specific area. This length represents the number of miles a particular tornado was on the ground. Use the data to complete parts A through D below. Well, um, so here's our data set in part A. Draw a histogram of the data and comment on the shape. Choose the correct histogram below. As you see here, I've already opened the data set. Um, I'm going to go to graph. Histogram, choose our column and click compute. As you can see here, the shape of the histogram is very um, skewed, right skewed, which lines up with option C. All right, comment on the shape of the histogram, choose the correct answer below. The histogram, as we can see with the tail over here on the right side, is skewed right. Draw a box plot of the data. Are there any outliers? Choose the correct box plot below. Right, let's go back to our data set. Go to graph, box plot, select the column, check the box for draw boxes horizontally so it'll look like our options here. Click compute. All right, there's our box plot. As we can see here, we do seem to have some outliers. Let's compare it to our options here. Looks like we are looking at option one, or excuse me, option A. All right, are there any outliers? So remember these lines right here are um, first um, and third quartiles. So the fact that we're seeing all these little dots, these little data points out here, yeah, there are some outliers outside of those ranges. So yes, because there are several values that fall at one and a half, one and a half, inner quartile range outside of Q1 or Q3, or yes, because there are several values that are more extreme than Q1 or Q99. Well, there's not 99 quarter quartiles. So we're gonna go with that first option. All right, based on the results to parts A and B, explain why a large sample size might be desirable to construct a confidence interval for the mean length of a tornado in this area. Choose the correct answer below. Well, I'm going to tell you right, I just read this. The results to parts A and B indicate the underlying population is normal. We already saw in part A from our histogram that it's right skewed. It is not normal, so we can already take that option out. Um, the results in parts A and B indicate the sample size is small relative to the population size. We have no idea what the population size is. Um, the results to parts A and B indicate the underlying population is non-normal. Such populations require large sample size to construct a valid confidence interval. I'm going to lean towards that one. Let's just double check part A. Indicate that the sample data are not independent. Yeah, again, we don't know anything about that. So let's go back to part B. We can tell from parts A and B that the data is not normal. Um, if we have a large enough sample size, then we can construct a confidence interval. Good job. All right, use statistical software to construct a 90% confidence interval for the mean tornado length. Select the correct choice below and fill in the answer to boxes, the answer boxes to complete your choice. Um, if repeated samples are taken, there is a 90% probability or we are 90% confident. As we've done in other problems, that's the answer. We are 90% confident that the population mean length of a tornado is between blank and blank. So let's go to stat. Now here we're looking at T stats because we're looking at the mean. One sample with data. We're going to select our column, come down here, make sure the confidence interval is selected and we're looking at 90%. Compute. So here we have our lower limit and we are going to round to two decimal places. So we're going to say 2.56 when we round and 4.12. Check answer. Excellent. So that's problem number 13 for module 3. Let me know if you have any questions.